So the grace you have can take you at any height, any level. That grace you have, with that grace, you can move, you can shake your time. The Bible says, every scripture is given by God. And every scripture is profitable. Is profitable. Every scripture. So whatever you see in the Bible, it is profitable. It is important. Hallelujah. Now, when you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, the, the writer says in a large house, you don't only have vessels of seal, of gold, but you also have those of silver, wood and clay. <laughs> Today I was just trying to see the, the vessels of wood so the, the, the Holy Spirit gave me some light to understand that even the vessels of food they are not the same because woods come from different trees now when you go into the scripture you are going to see different trees. You see, for example, the, the, the fig tree that Jesus saw at the roadside. So he went there to, to get some fruits. Matthew 21, 18. The Bible says, <clears throat> now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he became hungry. When he saw a fig tree, you know, by the road side, he went to eat, but found nothing. So this is also, is also a wood. So some wood are from fig tree. And some wood are from olive tree. Some wood are from palm tree. Some wood are from acacia. And do you know acacia tree? Yes. It's in the scripture, isn't it? Yes. The one that was used to, to, for the making of the, 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 the ark About of the God's covenant. And then you also have like uh, sycamore, they are there. And then you have like the cedar of Lebanon. So all, all those, they, they, they are trees. And then from those trees, they can make wood or get wood. And this wood can serve for different purposes. So this is what I was trying to just to study today. The, even today in this context, we have so many trees. And some trees, if you make a, a furniture, you know, it doesn't stay for a long time. Why? Because they, they are weak. And some will just enter insects and then they are destroyed. But you have some trees that are very important. For example, let me talk about this one. The cedar tree. Second Samuel 7-2. Okay, you can start from one. The Bible says, when the king settled into his house and the Lord had given him rest from all all of his enemies and all side. The king said to Nathan the prophet, I'm dwelling in the cedar house, but the ark of God is sitting in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that is in your heart because the Lord is with you. Now listen, here you, you see this is a cedar tree. A, a powerful one. When you look at cedar, it is royalty. It's not just any, any kind of wood. This is royalty. The king says, I'm living in a house of cedar of Lebanon. Wow. Uh, if you do research, according to in biblical days, cedar was a very strong uh, 
tree or wood if you want to use it they were using it even to make ships so it will stay on water for years very strong now here what is it that God wants to teach us this evening point number one it is strong number two it is royalty ya pili ni mti wa kifalme ya ya tatu it is divine ya tatu ni ya kiungu that's why it was used in the building of the temple ndio maana ilitumika kujenga hekalu by solomon na sulemani it is one of the best ni moja ya zile zilizo bora zaidi remember that after building the house na ukumbuke kwamba baada ya kujenga they used the 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 said that to do the the the, the garniture do you know garniture yes finishing You know you, you build the house with the stones and then inside now you, you make you beautify the house you, you make you know they, they use you know cedar tree to make design even, even to remove echo in the house and also for beauty you enter the house you get born again hallelujah amen that is the cedar and also it is durable and also it is the best now listen you see that even trees even wood when we talk about the vessels of wood remember what we said yesterday that uh, every grace that god has bestowed or given to church can take you to excellence inaweza kupeleka kwa ubora you can become powerful unaweza kuwa nguvu you can make waves unaweza tengeneza mawimbi because god is a great king kwa sababu mungu ni mfalme whatever he releases chochote anachokiachilia is divine ni cha kiungu it comes from the king of kings inatoka kwenye kwa mfalme wa falme it is royalty ni ya kifalme whatever gift that you have kipawa chochote whatever grace in that calling god has called you whatever that you have it has the four dimensions the first dimension which is gold the second dimension it is silver the third dimension which is wood and then the fourth dimension which is clay so according to second uh, timothy chapter 2 verse 20 now every grace of god has the ability you know to reach the four dimensions now your commitment to that which god has given you decide what to become in this kingdom amen hallelujah so if your commitment is minim kwa hivyo kama jitolea kwako ni kwa udogo aha so you also become that wood which is vile utakuwa ule mbao ambao ni wabure yes that's the point It means the, the wood that is found everywhere. The wood that cost nothing. The wood that is not respected. Why? Because of your commitment. Now here David says to the prophet. Look at me now. I live in this massive house. Built with the the wood, the timbers of cedar the cedar from Lebanon but look now my god the ark of covenant of god is in this uh, tent why should god live in a tent and me in the cedar so cedar was for the nobles it was for for kings it was for big people of their days people who ruled their time it was not for commoners it was not for just anybody it was for people who had a name people who made waves in those days those are the people who live 
lived in houses of cedar. So David says, I can't live in a cedar house and God in a tent. So you see, according to David, cedar is valuable. It's very important. It is huge. It is expensive. It is respected. Thy might. Do it seriously. Do it as tomorrow you are not going to live anymore. So if you do that way, automatically you must get a reward. There is this woman who was, uh, uh, let's say she, she was barren. You have always read about her. She was called Hannah. And this woman is barren. And in her barrenness, she refused to die barren. She said, I will not die barren. I must get children. And I will get. So as the co-wife was laughing at her and despising her, she went before God. She said, I will not die barren. I must get a son. And this son I want to get from you. I want to give him back to you. I want a prophet. I want a priest. I want somebody who will work before you. But remember that Penina had gotten children. Who are just commoners. Because in these days, priests were powerful leaders. Like, like Samuel. He was a priest. He was also like a king because he was the leader of Israel. Everything depended on him. And on these days, Israel didn't have a king. So Samuel was there. He was the priest or the high priest if you want. He was also the prophet and also the leader of Israel. Whatever he said, that is what Israel did. Even when Israel was going to war, he was the one to pray for people and release them. So listen, people of God. Now, what Hannah prayed for was more than all the children that Penina had gotten in Yes. What did she get? Because she wanted to get. In this kingdom, we don't get tired. In this kingdom, you don't get tired. And then you start complaining. In this kingdom, we don't complain. We fight and believe and trust and hope in what we want and we get it. Even when you talk about heaven, heaven, there are people who believe they will go to heaven. And there are people who believe they will not go. There are people who believe they will sit with Jesus. Eat with him in the kingdom of God. And there are people who are still wondering. They don't know if they will go there or if they will go on the other side. What you believe in, that's what you get. Your faith decides. Your commitment decides. If you are not committed or you don't have faith, you get nothing. So the potential you have, the calling you have, the grace you have can be maximized. You can elevate it at a high level. And if you decide, it will come to pass. When we didn't have means, how did we serve? I remember just a young guy. You know, I didn't know much. 
I just knew little in the kingdom. What I knew is just Jesus is Lord. Jesus can save. Jesus can lift up. Jesus can give eternal life. Can heal the sick. So I just knew few things about him. And I knew prayer. I knew about fasting. I remember I will go to church. When people go to bed, I go to church. I sleep in church. I pray until night. Until morning. Just a young guy. And then in church, we just start the church. Few people, three, four, five. And then the church is growing. Hey. Before we reach six months, the place is just loaded. We start expanding the tent you know, almost every month. People are flocking. And these people are big people. They are married. They have children. Me, I'm not married. We pray for the sick. They are healed. Miracles are happening. Hey. My God. I remember. In that place, it was a place where uh, there is uh, diamond. You know diamond? People will come to my house. I say, I've tried. I can't get. I put hands on this guy. He goes. Hey. So testimonies are coming. Parents are getting... You know what I was doing? I remember another lady who came to me crying. She said, my, my, my husband has uh, uh, chased me. The family of the husband came. They have chased me because I'm barren. Because the husband was born again, member of our church. I called him. Come and see me. So he came. I told him, listen, this woman will give you children. So don't send her away. The devil is alive. And then I told the lady, take a pen and a piece of paper. Write this day. Start counting days. Go to the market. Buy everything you need for, for your baby. Nine months, you have a child. Go. Start buying. <laughs> but the, 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 the children that we, we, we are nurturing, they don't have that faith that we have. They go and try to preach the gospel in a common way. You can't preach the gospel in a common way and make waves. Even if you don't say amen, that is the way. So the grace you have can take you at any height, any level. That grace you have, with that grace, you can move, you can shake your time. That grace that you have is too much. It is given to you by the king of kings. Listen to that. Whatever the kings, when, when the kings open his hand <laughs> and give you, you know, today, if for example you meet the president of and he tells you I want to bless you, whatever he gives you, it is powerful, isn't it? But this is just a man, a human being, who has limitations. Now, we talk about the king of kings. When he, when he stretches his hands towards you and releases something to you, that which God has given you can take you to places, can open doors, can put the world in your hands because he's the king of kings. 